We're back! The Sunday Times has once again published its Best Places to Live in London guide, this time for 2023. And also, once again, I'm going to ask my digital assistant Donna to help me out. Hi there. Do you want to tell us how the Sunday Times created the criteria for this list? Sure. Community. How the residents interact. Listen, I can't go that fast. Here are the criteria. You can read it for yourselves. So, let's start. Well, just to be contrary, the Sunday Times has created a top 8. Last year it was a top 6. Go figure. And in position number 8. 8. Whoa! Who was that? In number 8 it's last year's number 1, SE19, Crystal Palace. Sitting atop one of London's highest points, Crystal Palace enjoys a privileged perch overlooking the city. From these lofty heights the views are stunning, though the steep streets require strong legs. The bustling heart of the community centres around the triangular one-way system formed by Church Road, West O'Hill and West O' Street. This vibrant hub brimmed with pubs, eateries and independent boutiques. Vintage fashion reigns supreme here, especially on Sunday mornings when antique shops and stalls spill out onto Church Road's pavements. The original Crystal Palace burnt down in 1936, but its namesake park remains a treasured local gem, renowned for its towering dinosaur statues and the National Sports Centre. Also with a southeast postcode it's number 7. By the way, you haven't used me since a I became a thing. People might think my voice is a little too robotic sounding for 2023. Yeah, good point. You pronounced a I a little weirdly. 7. Be still my beating heart. Number 7, it's funky old Woolwich. It's pronounced Woolwich. Yeah, what I said. The recent popularity of Woolwich can be summed up in two words. Elizabeth Line. Or for purists, one word, Crossrail. But with the Elizabeth Line, a station on the DLR, the Woolwich Ferry and the proximity of the River Thames frontage, Woolwich has a lot going for it. The area was home to the Woolwich Dockyard, which was established in 1512 as England's first Royal Navy Dockyard. Ships such as the HMS Victory were built here. It was also the first place in Britain where a purpose-built cinema opened, in 1910. While that building is now a bingo hall, rather excitingly, the first UK branch of McDonald's opened here. The Royal Arsenal Riverside is a new development along the Thames, built around many historical buildings of the famous Woolwich Arsenal. And another thing going for Woolwich is that it's not simply a soulless new build. The new developments have been integrated with the existing town. Good old Woolwich. While you were talking, I went off to those people at Eleven Labs, who aren't sponsoring this video, to give myself a personality upgrade. Working. Working. There we go, I sound better now. Good grief. It's time for number six. Six. And time to go all foppishly Hugh Grant in Notting Hill. What can be said about Notting Hill that hasn't already been said? In the first place, why would it not be amongst the top places to live in London? It's got the annual carnival. It's a photogenic playground for filmmakers. The fabulous Portobello Road Market is here. And there's a thriving art scene. And while it may never shake off its association with Hugh Grant, that movie's success has opened a veritable smorgasbord of new restaurants and eateries. And that movie did wonders for local property prices too. It's very handy for central London. Not too far in to be overwhelmed with the hustle and bustle, but not too far out to feel suburban. We're now off to a place we visited in the 2022 list. Five. I really like that guy. Can I get his number? You're both software. Oh, okay. N1C, also known as King's Cross. A recent wave of revitalisation has swept through the King's Cross neighbourhood this year. Leading the charge are two new biogas-powered engines that provide renewable energy across the 67-acre N1C estate. The debut of the expansive new Lightroom Gallery, hosting an inaugural David Hockney exhibition, also made a splash. 
Nicknamed the Groundscaper for spanning the length of the towering shard, a billion-pound Google office introduced more energy. Plans were approved for the Camden High Line, an ambitious linear sky park. Additionally, the British Library's £500 million extension broke ground, adding event space and galleries. Through these cutting-edge projects, N1C continues to establish itself as a hub of innovation and creativity. Not far north of King's Cross and we reach number four. Four. We're off to the N1E8 borders, Hagerston and de Beauvoir Town. Where N1 meets E8, this area mingles period charm with the East London's dynamic edge. Though Hampstead and Highgate epitomise peaceful gentility, their premium properties and privileged lifestyle remain out of reach for most. Enter de Beaver Town, a secluded conservation area offering handsome late Georgian and early Victorian homes at slightly more affordable prices. Despite sharing the coveted N1 postcode with Islington, it falls primarily within Hackney, placing Upper Street's offerings within walking distance. Yet the avant-garde energy of Dalston is equally accessible, with experimental gigs at Café Otto and opera at the Arcola's Grimeborn Festival. The name is pronounced variously. It used to be De Beaver Town, but more folk are now calling it De Beauvoir Town. But I've made my choice. Things are getting very exciting now. It's the top three. What could it be? How thrilling! Don't overplay your part. Three. Okay, we're off to southwest London. Earlsfield. When talking about this area, the Sunday Times said, In football parlance, Earlsfield is a midfield workhorse in a team of show ponies. Maybe that's a little unfair, but with its charming period homes, riverfront walks, a vibrant high street, top-rated schools, abundant green spaces, a quick commute to Waterloo, this southwest London suburb ticks all the boxes for an ideal neighbourhood. Yet it remains overshadowed by the trophy homes of nearby prime urban villages like Wandsworth, Clapham and Wimbledon. It also can't compete with the energetic urban vibe of edgy tooting to the southeast. Residents won't claim their area, it's particularly cutting edge or hip, but there's still plenty of fun to be had. From lively Friday nights at the pub to comedy shows at the Tara Theatre, plus more brunch spots than you can shake an avocado toast at. While it may not make headlines, this pleasant residential area delivers suburban comforts and conveniences with ample dashes of city culture and cuisine. It's an understated gem where residents appreciate the quieter local lifestyle. We're getting close now to the top slot in London 2023. We're up to number two. Two. What kept Ultravox's brilliant song Vienna off number one in the singles chart? It was Shut Up Ya Face by Joe Dolce. In our number two, our Ultravox if you like, it's Beckenham. As we rise into the air above beautiful Beckenham Place, this drone eye view gives us a peek of how close or not close, London is. Those skyscrapers on the horizon. But Beckenham is an old place, formerly in the county of Kent, with a lovely village feel. There are independent shops, cafes and pubs. But with tram link and trains, London is an easy commute. Iconic addresses are typically marked with blue plaques, but Beckenham's most famous former resident has a gold disc in his honour. David Bowie called this suburb home from 1969 until 1972. He performed at the Three Tons pub and got his signature Ziggy haircut on the high street. Aspiring young Bowies, or is it Bowies, can develop their talents at the 500 seat theatre at Langley Park School for Boys, home of a community cinema club. Living in other suburbs calls an oh yeah at dinner parties but the Bowie connection adds extra cool points for living in Beckenham. Well, we've reached number one. We've been all over London now. Woolwich, De Belvoir Town, Beckenham, but... One. But number one is a new entry in the Sunday Times chart. Enough already. It's Crouch End. Crouch End is one of those places which thrive without a London underground station in sight. There are ample rail and bus services though. A lively market town feeling radiates from the focal point of the Broadway's iconic clock tower. 
There are dozens of independent shops, cafes, bars and eateries branching out along the surrounding streets. Grand 19th century Victorian mansions line the landscape, attracting creative professionals and celebrities drawn to the area's artsy atmosphere. Crouch End is known for fostering a lively yet inviting environment, from the bustling Hornsey Town Hall that hosts markets and events, to the abundant green escapes like the Parkland Walk. It maintains a cosy small town feel that's all its own. The local events like the Crouch End Festival which takes place every July and the community spirit add to its distinctive culture and flair. With city conveniences but an artistic soul, Crouch End blends the best of both worlds for its residents. That was very exciting, but I've got to go. I've got a gig doing satellite navigation. Yeah? At the end of the road, bear right. Turn around where possible. Not here, you fool. This is a dual carriageway. What do you think? Anyway, see you around. Oh, bugger. Wrong way. <laughs>